Hey, everybody. Welcome to Weight Loss for Women Over 40 podcast. Just want to give a side note today. I don't know what I have. I have some sort of cough going on. Um, it's driving me crazy. So I do have a cough drop in my mouth. So hopefully that won't affect too much. I don't want to be coughing the entire episode. So welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be talking about weight loss fails and what some of them are what does this actually mean and how we can move forward from them? Plus, I'm very excited about this. I have a special addition to this episode today that I know you're going to want to grab. So make sure you listen to the entire episode and you're going to find out what it is. So whether you are new here or a longtime listener, I am so glad you are here with me today. I'm your host, Nikki T, and I'm the person to call when you want to lose weight for the last time in a simple, easy, and doable way that involves a lot more mindset ninja skills before you step foot in the gym or go get a bite of food to eat. I'm so glad you're here, and I love getting on the phone with people that want to work with me, and the first thing that they say is, I found your podcast, and I started binge listening to it while I was walking. Uh, I am so grateful for this platform um, that it exists, where people all over the world can hear this, so just know from the bottom of my heart, I'm very grateful for everybody that is listening um, and sharing. So let's dive into the topic. It is safe to say that in the weight loss arena, the word fail comes up a lot. Now, you may not use this exact word, but it certainly is implied. So when I talk to women who want to work with me, they tell me all the programs and diets they've tried in the past. AKA, this is what I've done and this is what I failed at in the past. There's an underlying tone of shame, like it should have worked, but I wasn't able to do it. I failed. So I remember being in first grade and either I believe that the um, grading system was an S for satisfactory, an I for needs improvement, and an F for failure, right? This is what I remember it as. So our brain will bring up memories about our grades, right? And I remember this very distinctly, this moment in my childhood. I will never forget it. We had a small sheet that had four pictures on it. And those four pictures were a story depicting the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. But the pictures were in order, right? So the assignment was to put the pictures in the correct order by numbering them. Clearly, I did not understand the assignment and or I had another version of how the story should have gone in my head. I don't know. But I remember getting this paperback with a huge F written in red ink and it was circled just in case I didn't see the big red F. I was crushed. An F I was like, what, seven at the time when I was in first grade? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that F did not derail my successes in life, but it certainly made me feel like crap about myself and like I wasn't good enough. Do you remember a time when you got a quote unquote bad grade? What did you think about it? How did it make you feel? Now, clearly, this moment in my life left a mark on me because I still remember it like it happened yesterday. But the biggest takeaway here is that F had nothing to do with me as a person. I just got the story plot mixed up. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't know if they read the story and then this was the assignment to see if we were paying attention. So maybe I wasn't paying attention. Maybe I wanted to redo the story. I wouldn't be surprised because that is me. <laughs> Who knows? But I made that F mean something about me. Failing at weight loss is not who you are. You are not a failure. Chances are you just didn't select the correct assignment for you in order to lose and keep the weight off for good. And because you've done this, over and over and years and years and decades, you now have some mind drama in the way. You could try another diet. You could force yourself to work out. 
you could continue to hate yourself skinny. And I get it. I've been where you have been. I've been where you are right now today. Like, what the hell? Why is this not sticking? Why is it not working? I attempted to do all the above. I did diets. I obsessed over every little thing that I ate. I micromanaged all the things in an effort to maintain my lean body. Uh, in a couple episodes ago, actually, it's been a while, um, when I moved out and moved into my apartment, I found all my um, my like journals and logs. I'm talking like two inch thick or more binders of papers and papers of me detailed in my food, in my workout. And again, like that episode I said, it, it helps me be a better personal trainer and a coach to you and my clients. But I don't want to live my life like that, right? And it doesn't work long term. So in the interim of in this space of like you're choosing diets, it's not working, you feel horrible about yourself, right? And then you're on this crazy hamster wheel that you got yourself on. It's like those, do you remember those spinny things that we had when we were little in, in the 80s? The child um, playground, they, they don't have them anymore. They banned them from the playground because uh, I, I like to call it the wheel of death, right? You get on this spinny thing and it spins really fast because your friends are spinning it. And if you're on this thing and you try to jump off, it was like you were close to a near-death experience. You don't want to jump off because you know it's going to hurt when you hit that dirt. It's the same thing with being on this diet yo-yo roller coaster of constantly trying the diet and then, quote unquote, failing on the diet and then picking another diet and then failing again, right? So let's not get into the whole grading system of schools in the U.S. because that is a total topic for a completely different podcast. But essentially, it sets you up for that A, right? It sets you up for that gold star. But if you get an F, wow, you might as well like cross your fingers, leave school, and hope that you can get a job at a fast food joint, which is just not true. That bad grade is like, a, that F is like a scarlet letter. But what if failing was actually how you get to the goal? How you succeed? Because here's the truth. Failing is simply a concept somebody created. Failing is actually valuable information that you can use to move forward with your goals. I think we don't have a problem thinking about this in a business sense, like especially if you're an entrepreneur, but when it comes to weight loss, you guys don't think this way. You want to fail. Well, currently you don't, you really don't want to fail. No one wants to fail, but it's because of what we've been taught of what failing means. That's why we don't want to fail. But I strongly encourage you to go for the fail, but not just any kind of fail. It completely baffles my mind when I talk to women who are like, yeah, I'm going back to the watchers of the weight, wink, nudge, nudge. And when I ask them if they're going back, if it worked, and they're like, well, no, then why would you continue to go back to something that doesn't work? That makes no sense to me. It's like going back to an old boyfriend because it's comfortable. It feels safe, but it's not getting you what you wanted. It's not getting you that mind-blowing relationship that you truly want. And maybe there's a side of that. It's like, you don't think you can get it. There's a whole nother topic. So let me lay this out for you. No diet will ever work unless you plan on doing that diet for the rest of your life, period. No deviations, no side tracks, following that diet to a T till the day you die. If you love it, then do it. But if you get the ick from it and you're not able to keep it up or don't want to keep it up, but keep forcing yourself, right? This is why I do not give meal plans. You don't have to count anything or points. Like, I think that's the biggest aha and confusion when people come into my program. I'm like, we're, there's no meal plans. We're not, no. 
I teach my clients mindset skills that are simple to implement into your life. So you don't have to do any of that other stuff. I don't know if you can hear my dog barking. She's having a field day right now. So like I said, I don't edit these. Um, so you cannot start with the food and the exercise until you work through the mind drama about losing weight. So let's talk about what it means to fail. Now, I know most women who want to come work with me, you guys are the type A personalities. I do get type B personalities as well, but type A personalities, I get you. I get it. You ladies are the ones with the details, the micromanaging order, and you feel like you are a get things done gal. And this probably serves you very well in a lot of other areas in your life, like work, kids, household, et cetera. But it reeks of perfectionism. And I know this because having grown up in the ballet world, nothing else but perfection was acceptable. And this is really challenging in the weight loss journey. Because yes, you can plan and you can implement, but typically it is so rigid that you snap at some point and have a bad case of the fuckets. If you don't know what the fuckets are, it's the screw it, I don't care, I'm going overboard on food, I don't, I just don't care anymore, right? And then after that happens, then you beat yourself up for doing it and then you punish yourself for getting uh, like stricter with your diet or your workout. And yeah, I get it. I did this for years. It sucks. I don't recommend it at all. So I mentioned the school system. Whatever you have deemed as a quote unquote failure is someone else's standard that you have taken on as a little comfort pet. It is your way to beat yourself into submission and keep reliving the underlying thought that you are not good enough or some version of that. If this hits you hard right now, you must work with me. Having traveled that road and also coached many women on that path, I can tell you there is a light at the end of the tunnel on this, but it requires coaching. It requires deep diving into coaching, of course, which I can help you with. So is this failure that you did really a failure? And if so, says who? What if failure was the only way that you got to your goal? The only way to succeed. So if your goals are built on a pile of failures, what does that look like? So let's classify what are failures. So I have two versions of this. One is a backwards failure. These are failures that keep you exactly where you currently are. Accepting defeat before you even started. Quitting. Basically, not even trying. Success failures are when you attempt to do something that is moving you closer to your goal. A success failure requires you to be uncomfortable. And it's usually something you would not normally do. You have to get uncomfortable to increase your capacity for comfort. So we are not practicing backwards failures. That is not an option. <laughs> Repeat after me. We are only practicing success failures. So like I said in the beginning of this episode, I have a beautiful bonus for you that I am so excited to share with you. I have created a free download for you on failures. It is a workbook that is going to walk you through what the next steps are for you to take to move past these failures and continue towards your goals. So if you want to grab that, simply go to weightlossforwomenover40.net slash fails, F-A-I-L-S, and grab your free copy of this worksheet. I'm sorry, it's a workbook, it's not a worksheet. So again, go grab that freebie right now while it's still available and hone in on that work. And um, it's, it's very mind blowing. So that's all for today. Um, remember to subscribe, follow, share, whatever feels comfortable for you. And I will see you next week on the next episode.